we've got um, Jamie from Australia calling in um, who wants to talk about SE, so street epistemology. Jamie, can hi, you hear Anne. us? Hi, Dave. Yeah, I can hey, hear you. Okay. Um, good evening to you guys. It's a cold Saturday morning here, but um, my Saturday morning starts right. out every week listening to this show, which I love. Oh, um, thank you. You have a question for us today? Yeah. Well, I just want to also say thanks to Dave. I'm just loving everything you're doing, and um, I'm a patron of yours, and just live every moment, mate, until... Oh, thank you, Jamie. Awesome. But, um, yeah, pleasure. So, look, my uh, I've been a atheist pretty much my entire life. Um, the religion over here is not that big, fortunately, but um, I've been racking my brain since I've been interested in the atheist community for good SE questions, and one came to mind. So if you guys could put on your dusty old Christian hats for a second and, and <laughs> let me propose this to you. Um, imagine, um, and I'm assuming that if you're an evangelical, God speaks to you in some fashion, whether you're having these overwhelming feelings or the, you hear words in your head. Um, so imagine if God was speaking to you, you guys, and he asked you to kill your mother a little bit like uh, they did in the Bible, killing the son, and um, and then question them and just say, hey, okay, well, would you kill your mother if God asked you to? Now, out of some super-duper evangelicals, you might just go, oh, yeah, and you go, okay, well, what evidence, surely you would need evidence to know that your message you're receiving is from God. What evidence would you need for you to, to be convinced that this message to kill your mother was coming from God, which speaks to how each of them, you know, each each evangelical is actually receiving the word of God. So back if you, so what would you answer to that back in the day when you were a Christian? You want mm. us to put our Christian hat back on? <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. If someone, if someone said that to me, if I was a Christian still, I probably w well, I think I think I would have said no, <laughs> um, and I think it would have been felt like I was a bad Christian because I couldn't do it. Um, I I have some thoughts right. where you could take those questions, those if you know from the atheist perspective. But I mean, let's get Dave's answer first before we go into that. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. I mean, there are so many variations of Christians in the mm -hmm. evangelical world. Most Christians, I think. Probably my answer to that, Jamie, would have been, God wouldn't tell me to do that. Or mm -hmm. God wouldn't ask me to do that. And then if you came back and said, well, he asked Abraham to kill Isaac, um, I would have said that was an uh, extra kind of thing that God was doing to demonstrate faith in Abraham because he was going to need Abraham's uh, high caliber faith to to generate the and to populate the earth of his people that god was that was a special exemption or a special case if you will like job that god just doesn't go around doing that so i would have been pushing back against the question now interestingly enough on the atheist experience a few months ago that question was posed and the caller we we asked him uh would you would you kill your son if God told you to? And he said, yes. And that those kinds of people are scary, if you ask mm -hmm. me. And I never was that oh. brand of Christian, if you will. Um, I, I just, those kind of people, I mean, there are people who've done that, who've killed their kids because they believe, they heard voices telling them to do it. And they, they went to prison, rightfully so. So that's a that's an that's a level of insanity, if you will, and that's you know that speaks to the to the issue of people who hear voices, or to, we we call them insane unless they're Christians, <laughs> you know. So um, those are interesting questions, Jamie. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Look, it's a bit of a sliding scale when you look at, you know, at what point do we decide these people are crazy? Because you know it's. It's a very, um, you know, politically incorrect path to go down. You know, as soon as we determine someone has a mental health problem, then it's kind of like hands off, these guys need help. But then at some point, you know, there's got to be degrees of it or there's got to be a spectrum of it. And, you know, it's it's when the self-delusion kicks in. 
um, you know, where we start to, to run into to problems. And, um, you know, I, I've got a brother who uh, is essentially ostracised himself from the family because he is a, just a out and out there conspiracy theorist. And he's got a mental health problem. And, and, you know, he comes across as being completely, you know, sane and, and et cetera. And he can part, compartmentalise himself. So he can, he can talk to people and seem pretty normal. But if you get under the covers and listen to what he's got to say, it, I mean, it's, it's really out there. It's crazy. And I won't yeah. go into yeah. the sort of stuff he says. But, um, yeah, he's got a mental health problem. I, and I have to look at him and go, he's, he's got, um, sorry, I, I think well, I'm talking okay. about it. that's okay. But um, he's got a, a, you know, I've got to treat him like someone with Alzheimer's. You know, I've got to go, yeah. I've got to just stop a wow. moment and go, hang on a second, this guy's got a problem. You know, so it's, it's, it's difficult. Well, and, and I think we need to be like, we need to be clear that like not everybody who's religious is struggling with mental health. Um, but I think that it is the perfect avenue for somebody who does have a pre-existing mental health issue or maybe has developed one as throughout their, their lives as a Christian or a, any kind of um, theist, really, that it's an avenue to really radicalize somebody and to really take advantage of of their mental illness. So I, I think that's a good point, Aaron. Yeah. Um, and, and I think Jamie, a good exercise for street epistemology kind of uh, conversations with people, if you were to ask them, you know, if God commanded you to kill your son, like he did Abraham or mm -hmm. to kill your mother. And they said, yes. Or if they even equivocated on that, then you could say, either way, if you ask them that question, if they say yes, you would, ask, my follow-up question with them would be, how do you know, how are you able to tell the difference between what's your own thought and what's God's voice? Mm -hmm. And is it possible that you're thinking God is saying something when it could actually be your own thought? That's what the best kind of street epistemology questions are open-ended like that to give them an out. Whenever they feel like you're trying to corner them, then they, they get squirrely on you. But if you say, is it possible that that thing you're thinking is God's voice, is it possible that that's your own mind? And then you can get them thinking that, hmm, maybe I'm not seeing things quite as clear clearly as I thought I was. Yeah. Yeah, I really like the, the yeah, where you're going with this. Sorry, there is a, there's, I think there's a longer delay with you being in Australia. I was just going to say <laughs> that I, uh, I, I really like that line of questioning and making it a pretty, like, um, a, a clear a clear way for them to say like um, that cognitive dissonance that they may be having and then just keep, keep going with it. Keep going with it. Um, unfortunately, Jamie, we do have to let you go because we are pretty well out of time now. So um, thank you so much for calling in and for your support of the show and the support of Dave. And we'll thank talk you to you so hopefully much, again some other time. Okay. Thanks, Jamie. Okay. Yeah, I love those kind of questions. I love those kind of uh, street epistemology questions where you really get down to the nitty gritty of it. Like, would you do this? Um, and, yeah, if, and if they if say not, no, like, well, I wouldn't got, do it. You've got a precedent. You... Yeah, they did right. it in the Bible. And that's similar well, I... with, he with healing questions. We talked a little bit earlier about like, uh, why not? Why not? They, they did it in the Bible. <laughs> I think it's a good it's a good it's a good way to go um, with that. 